Holy smoke, guys. Check this out. What you are looking at from behind is a Philips radiogram. Let's have a look from the front. Some of you are gonna love this. Pick this up at a local auction for less than three dollars. I'm not even kidding. This is the best deal I've ever made on a radio. And it's a radiogram at that. <laughs> and the needle is there, which is even more amazing. And, uh, yeah, what can I say? This is a stereo gramophone. It has FM. I wonder if it has FM stereo. That would be so freaking cool. But yeah, FM, short wave, medium wave, long wave, gramophone, mono or stereo. And all the switches are working. And look at this. Isn't this cool? Unfortunately on this side it seems to be broken. But isn't this something? <laughs> that is so cool. Never seen anything like it before. The dial strings aren't snapped. The, like the controls, they feel fine. Other than this one. <laughs> Yeah, what the steal? Like seriously, this is this is amazing. For three dollars, I got this. Yeah, what can I say? This beats the deal I got on the Luxor. I got the Luxor from 1941 for five dollars, <laughs> and this here is a way more advanced radio. Let's have a look in the back. Check this out. This is amazing. Uses EL86s for the outputs, which is, these are some bloody good power tubes actually. These are not like the EL84s, these are way more powerful. ECC83 down in there. ECH81, what's this? This is a EBF89, that's a tube I have in another radio. Uh oh, we have a bit of corrode doodle. That could potentially become an issue later. We'll find out. Uh, what do we have down there? I can't really tell right now. Here we, should we have a look? See what kind of vacuum bulb is hiding here. Something in the shield. What could that be? ECC85, that's a tube I recognize from another radio of mine. See if we can put this back so that I don't forget where they go. That's actually a pretty cool solution. Look at the tab there touching the shield. Now that's kind of cool. You don't see that on many radios. A lot of them just use a simple wire for connecting. This one here was ahead of its time. <laughs> Yeah, stereo gramophone, not stereo radio. I highly doubt it has FM stereo with only one, two, three, four, five, six vacuum bulbs, seven including the eye, which is there. That looks like an ordinary one of those. What are they called now? I can't remember their bloody name. These European tubes. That one has gone to air, actually. Yeah, look, it's gone to air. There's no gather on it anymore. But yeah, that's... This is so freaking cool though. You don't see... Like this area of radios, at this point... They've started to become really quite good. And here's the voltage selector. Set to 220. We're gonna have to change that to 240 later. But that's the least of my worries right now. There we have those things that rotate when you rotate the knobs, look. And uh, this one on this side has... If you look at this one, you can see how it works. It's so clever. But this one here, it unfortunately seems to have the thing gone. It just slides in there, basically. 
that's such a neat system though, like, bloody hell, <laughs> never seen anything like it before, this thing is gonna be sick if I can get it to work, look at the state of this, <laughs> that's brutal, damn, someone had a bad day when he plugged this in, I can guarantee you that, it's gonna be a huge bloody bang, oh yeah, and here's a gramophone signal cable going in there and it's just shoved in there it looks like with some connectors let's have a look underneath i think it has a service panel actually so that's I could have an asbestos sheet there too i really hope not because if so that's gonna be a problem let's have a look had to bring out the vacuum cleaner, there was a bunch of crap on this. <laughs> That's actually a aluminum foil piece. This thing looks almost virgin. <laughs> In fact, I think it is virgin, look at this. Oh, that is cool, there's a power transformer. This thing is got a few paper caps, yeah it has. These are probably electrolytics. Let's go on there. There's a few paper caps here. Ferret branded paper capacitors, polyester film or whatever they are. Some of them like to short, but for the most part, those kind of capacitors are pretty damn reliable. We got these nice Philips electrolytics. I've never seen one of them go bad in my entire life, and I've had a lot of them. Wow, this thing is something special, and I found this. We're just laying in there. So we can probably put that back, no problem. I would, however, like to repaint these so that they get shiny white again. But, yeah. And if you look at the screw heads, they've never been touched. Seriously. Yeah, there's no... Nobody has ever opened this radio. And it uses one of these nice selenium rectifiers, which probably is bad. We'll find out one day or another. But yeah, this is... And look at these speakers. Look at the funky way they mounted them. That's so cool. And there's a lot of dust in here. Like on the tubes and everything. So you're going to have to give this thing a blow up before we go further with it. But like, look in here. <laughs> Damn, this thing is nice. It really is. I almost hate having to touch this. Like, these paper caps are the plate to greet the coupling for the output tubes and uh, if they leak, we're gonna burn up the output tubes. So we're most likely gonna have to change those, but... Damn, <laughs> this thing is a piece of... piece of art, basically. It's absolutely beautiful. And look at the baffles in here. Like... The base is supposed to hit the back, which you hopefully have standing against a wall. Like these speakers, they're probably gonna sound pretty damn good. And what are they? Six and a half inch speakers? Yeah, this thing is huge. Seriously. This is a big bloody radio. And uh, I'm a bit... How are you supposed to take out the front no, I am not entirely sure how to do that. How is it secured? I'm pretty sure there is service info on this. But bloody hell, what a beauty. Huh, for three dollars. <laughs> this is amazing. Like they took a shock block and they cut it in half. Like, why? <laughs> oh, hell. 
It's a shame somebody cut this old power cord though, because it's still absolutely fine. So I guess somebody did this because they stole the power cord for something else. That was common back in the day. I see that on a lot of stuff actually. But look at this bloody construction with the speakers. And they seem perfect. Bloody hell. Yeah, this thing is... It's a real beauty. It looks like the eye tube has gone to air. I can't see any gather on it anymore. It looks like it has gone to air, but that's not a big problem. Those are sheep. I still can't remember the name of those eye tubes. It completely escapes me. Bloody hell. <laughs> this thing is so huge, look. This is gonna be a really fun project. And uh, I don't know if I even will have to do a whole lot to it. Like, I may not even have to, but obviously we need to fix the pointer and we need to give it a little bit of a blowjob. But, like, the dial face isn't dirty, surprisingly. Like, there's no dirt on it. Normally, these are dirty as hell, but nope, not this one. So, hmm. Maybe this thing just needs a little blow job and of course it needs the power cord changed, there's no doubt about that. But like, I don't think there's a whole lot that needs to be done, to be perfectly honest. Change those coupling caps maybe. Well, we'll see, I haven't even applied power yet, so anything could be wrong. 110 volts. That's interesting. So the turntable motor is a 120 volt and it's running on a tap of the power transformer. Now that's kind of cool. Why did they do that? It could have just made a 220 motor. But no, they went and put a 110 volt. And this is a ground planes. Look at this. <laughs> that's so cool. I think this plug went in here. So you would get a ground plane. That's so freaking neat. Never seen anything like this before. Like, this is properly neat. Aside from this line cord repair. Should we power it up? On the bulb limiter, of course. Ah, oh, look. That's the turntable. Dukes. That's cool. 110 volts, 50 cycles. That's weird. Oh, the belt is broken. Not a, not a great surprise. But, bloody hell. Yeah, that belt. Wow, that's dry rotted. Very dry rotted. But, this is, this is cool. We need to... I'll get some Wagos out. I think we need to plug this thing into the bulb limiter and see what it does. I can't wait. This is a bit safer. Not ideal, but safer. Let's unscrew one of the bulbs. So we have 60 watts of current limit. Let's plug it in. And let's see what happens. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Completely dead. So this thing has probably blown a fuse somewhere. Completely dead. Huh. It's weird. They usually don't die completely. Hmm. 
nothing. That's weird. Completely dead. Confirming we have voltage. We do. Hmm. That's weird. Completely dead. It's the next day and I think I know why it doesn't work. This here is a thermal fuse and it has tripped. It's supposed Wait, there's solder here. It almost feels like there's a loose connection. But this thermal fuse is supposed to go there. Finger on it. It's supposed to go around and grab that one. That's why it doesn't work. Resoldered and uh, fixed, and the thermal fuse is now in place. And I also thought I would touch this solder up. Solder up because it looked really bad, so I went ahead and did that. It's actually stronger than the original, so that's kind of cool. I asked for it looked kind of crusty, and I wanted to make it better so that's what I did unscrew this bulb it's set to medium wave they put it on short wave see what happens ha look at that and that's the reason why you don't plug something like this straight into mains because it's drawing a shit ton of power right now down it's like dropping the full mains voltage on that let's see can we grab this meter put that across the lamp you see there 19 volts across the radio so it's a dead short no wonder the thermal fuse popped Let's try another light bulb. Oh yeah. It's not looking too good, is it? Off. Medium wave. Not looking too good, is it? Do we have any sort of life? I think the filter cap is shorted. Is it going up? Yeah, it is. Let's go back to single light bulb. Yeah, I think we've got shorted filters. Let me flip it around and hook a voltmeter to it. This is across the main filter. We have a dead short. Like, see zero volts getting to the filter cap that's not so that great that's why the thermal fuse has popped let's try another light bulb well it does come up ever so slowly well I suppose we'll let it sit with two light bulbs for a while uh, Let's see, is that filter getting hot? No. <laughs> Damn. This is not good. This is one of the worst. We are reforming right now. Big time. Dead shorted filter is most likely what this is or extremely unformed filter any sort of heater action? nope nothing let's pull some of the tubes out 
see if it helps with your power consumption, it doesn't seem to. This is a case of extremely shorted filter tabs. Like, damn. I'm not, not even sure if this would come back. Selenium rectifier seems fine, but it doesn't. It takes a while to drain. That's what I find so weird. Is the turntable trying to run or what? Hmm. What's wrong? Why are you so sad? Does it really draw this much power? I highly doubt it. Because that's 60 watt light bulbs right there and Hmm. Seems a bit excessive to me in terms of current draw. And the voltage isn't really going up. Do we have a bad power transformer? Like a dead shorted power transformer? Is that what we have? That's why the thermal fuse was tripped. a blob of solder here should be careful because this thing is plugged in right now although it's plugged into an isolation transformer to prevent instant death that doesn't seem good I do wonder if the power transformer is bad. Let's see. AC and AC. Could also be that the selenium has shorted. Let's find out. Can we measure here and here? 300 millivolts coming out of the transformer that doesn't seem right at all and that's the B plus coming off the rectifier Yeah, this is toast. Let's pull some vacuum tubes. We'll pull the power output tubes because they're easy to put back. It doesn't even help, does it? Let's pull another tube here. No, it doesn't make any difference. I think we have a short somewhere. Like a real hard short. I wish I had a thermal camera. Because the thing is passing significant current, so something should be heating up. Hmm. 
Hmm. After a bit of probing around, I found that the rectifier is dead shorted. It's zero ohms. That is very likely why we have absolutely nothing. So I'm gonna take this thing apart somehow. And uh, once I've done that, we are going to change the bridge rectifier for a modern one. Yeah, that's most likely why the thing is completely dead. The rectifier has pooped its guts out. There must be something missing here. Like, this shouldn't just be shoved on there, that feels wrong. There's probably supposed to be a bimetal strip there, which is gone. So what I need to do is I need to install a fuse holder here, or something. Just an inline fuse holder. Uh, so that we can run the thing without risking to burn up the power transformer. So that's gonna be one thing that needs to be done. And the rectifier is dead shorted. I was able to put this pin back in that was missing. So now we've got both of them. So that looks good. And this is not actually all that dirty. Yeah, it's a little bit dirty, but like this will clean up just fine. There's no real dirt on it. So that's great. I don't really know how it can be so corroded though, but well it it is. This lamp holder is bent. Don't think it's supposed to look like that. <laughs> so somebody has probably been a bit too hard on it at some point. Yeah, you see, it's bent. It's not supposed to be bent. It's supposed to be straight up. Somebody has probably been a bit too hard on it, trying to pull the lights out. Like that. Here we go. And there's a light bulb over here too. We'll go around and check and see which ones are still good. This one does look like it's burned out though. These should just be ordinary. 6.3 volt lamps This is how these are supposed to be I think I can see why they bent it though It heats the tuning strings but you don't need to bend it so much, that should do. Yeah, it moves freely now. But yeah, it's kind of interesting. Welcome back to the radiogram. So, here's where we're at with this. I've discovered that the power transformer is unfortunately bad. The secondary high voltage winding is completely shorted, like zero ohms. And uh, that's a bit of a problem because, well, the transformer is absolutely useless. Now, luckily, I have another radio which has problems which I can't seem to fix. I've tried everything I can. I can't get anywhere with it. However, it has this power, or had this power transformer, which has almost exactly the same taps as this one. The only thing I don't know if is if, if, if the high voltage tap on this one is the proper voltage, but it should work in here and it's got the same physical footprint and the same physical construction if we have a look at this transformer on the bottom here we we'll look at the dead one you can see we can probably 
put this on here and uh, actually make it work in the radiogram. One more thing which this thing doesn't have, this thing doesn't have a center tap 6.3 volt winding. And you can see here, there's the fuse here, so this is one side of the 6.3, this is where you're supposed to attach the filaments. And this is the other side of the 6.3 here, which went to chassis on that radio. Um, got a high voltage winding here, I believe. No, here it is. I got that marking here. That's the secondary high voltage right there. So that's 180 volts or something like that. So that's not really all that high, but I think it's similar to what this one had. The only thing that's slightly different here on this one is it has a center tap for the 6.3, which was there. And we don't have a center tap on the 6.3 on this one, it's just 6.3. So we might run into issues there, but we'll see. So here is the heat, the wires that went to the heaters. If I'm not entirely mistaken, and we got this which went to this light bulb which was just soldered here. This is the live coming from the power cord, I believe. Can't quite remember what that was, but that's why I've got these neutral. And I've also got plenty of photos. So, yeah. We're gonna try and get this power transformer put into this thing today. And uh, if we succeed with that, we might be able to bring some life into this thing. I also pulled vacuum tubes out, both from this radio and from this one. Uh, I found a better eye tube. This is the one that came out of this radio and it's gone to air, unfortunately completely gone to air but in that other radio I had a good one here which is actually in pretty okay condition it's got a few hours on it but it still works fine so I've got an eye tube that works now and I've also got a few front end tubes which might be in better shape and here's one of the speakers these are very interesting speakers these are 800 ohm so real gotta be real careful so these here these are not output transformers these are simply shocks so that you don't get dc current through the loudspeakers basically so this is an otl amplifier and that's why it uses eol86s because they can drive very low impedances for being vacuum tubes i think they are rated for driving like 500 ohms or something like that so very impressive so those drive the speakers which are 800 ohm directly so these speakers if these break i'm gonna be real sad but yeah that's where we're at so i pulled all the tubes out to prevent any damage when flipping this thing around and stuff transformer swap is what we're gonna do so i think i should just get on with it <laughs> I'm going to try and swap the transformer and see if we can get a bit of power onto this.